Hey everyone, so I am once again back outside in February without a coat on. I think it's 60 degrees today, which again is absolutely not normal for Chicago. But today what I'm gonna do is sew my first round of cool weather crops with you. Now, honestly, sewing my spring round of cool weather crops doesn't excite me that much, only because the last few springs haven't really been great for them. So let me rewind just a bit, but essentially throughout the growing season, you can sow cool weather crops in spring, then you have your heat loving crops throughout the majority of the summer, and then in fall, you can have your cool weather crops again. Ideally, the temperature should be between like 50 to maybe low 70s, but what's happened in Chicago the last two or three springs is that it's been like 30 to 40 for a very long time. So not warm enough to really get them growing and then it's jumped up into the 80s which is too hot so there hasn't really been that long enough period of ideal cool weather temperatures in the spring last year i couldn't even get a full round of radishes which has a very very short life cycle and that's the first time that's ever happened now fall i feel like i've had much better luck the temperatures tend to be more steady in the fall than in the spring but we'll see what happens. This spring is already starting off completely differently than in the past. So that's why I'm getting my cool weather crop started now. I do wanna talk quickly, if you don't know when is kind of a good time to start your crops, again, not sponsored, but an app that I've used since 2019 is called From Seed to Spoon. And you can pull up your plants there that you want to sow and see when the best time is to get them planted. And the app uses your location from your phone to know when that best time is. And it'll give you a good range. In fact, let me pull it up right now and I will put on the screen what it says for the crops I'm gonna be sowing. All right, so I have the app pulled up here. Again, it's from Seed to Spoon and I just searched for radishes because that's one of the crops I'm gonna start today. And it says the outdoor spring planting window begins February 20th. So we're just a little bit early and then it ends March 27th And I'm gonna actually sow them in at least two rounds potentially three just so I can have multiple harvests of the radishes But the reason I'm starting a bit early is again This is gonna be based on historic averages and this February has just been much warmer than normal So I don't want to have the issue I had last year just in case we get really warm really fast So I'm gonna start my cool crops a little bit early this season um, it says here if you want to do fall, you want to start those August 14th to September 11th. And then the days to harvest, that's going to depend upon the variety. So let me actually show you the two varieties. Or do I have three? First is the Radish Hybrid Starburst. These are from Park Seed. I grow them just because they're pretty. Um, but I think these actually have a longer days to harvest. I think this is 60 days, which is long for radishes. They typically are one of the shortest days to maturity plants. So I have these. Then I have also from Park Seed, the Parks Beauty Blend. And then last from Seed Savers Exchange. I got these from some garden center. I can't remember now, um, but just early Scarlet Globe Radish. Now these let's see if it says days to harvest, is 20 to 28 days. So that's how quickly these are gonna be ready, assuming the temperatures stay consistent for what these plants need. And then the Parks Beauty Blend, I think that was also 30 days. So I'm gonna sow all three, I'm gonna start them today. And then for the ones that have a shorter day to maturity, I'll start another round in about three to four weeks. And luckily with radishes, they don't take up a lot of space. Uh, these are going to go in my gomfrina bed and then they'll be harvested before I plant the gomfrina in it. So that is number one. Number two are peas. And I have two varieties that I have grown before. This first one is Royal Snap 2. These are from Johnny Seed. Now I will say, if you are just getting started with gardening, I would start with getting seeds from Johnny Seed. The seed packet itself isn't the prettiest, but there's so much information on these that it was really helpful when I was getting started and had absolutely no idea what I'm doing. So I love these, and the reason I chose the Royal Snap 2 is because the seed pods are purple. They don't taste any different than regular green snap peas, but they're pretty. And again, that seems to be one of my main determiners for what I'm gonna grow in my garden. Um, the other one is from Park Seed, and this is Pea Patio Pride. These are smaller. So these are specifically made for container gardens or gardens where you don't have quite as much space. And I'm gonna do both because this seed packet I've had, does it say when I got it? Was it 2020 or 2021? And germination rates can go down. One, I guess, benefit of a smaller garden is that you can make one seed packet last a very long time. But again, 
germination rates will go down the longer you have your seeds. So just in case, I haven't noticed it yet, but just in case, I'm also gonna sow some of these and I'm just going to alternate between them in the same bed. And then lastly, I am going to sow some lettuce. So these are actually 21 to 45 days to maturity. So this is another good crop to do some succession planting. Um, so here I'm going to put these I might actually put them in the bed where I sowed natives or do I want to mix them with the radishes? I'm not sure yet. That's one of the things when it comes to smaller gardens or container gardens, you have to push things together and make them fit so you can grow everything that you want. So those are the three things I'm going to plant today. I have done in the past beets and broccoli. I had really good luck the first year and then ever since that, not great luck. So at this point, I'm kind of like, you know what, maybe I'll try later but it's not going to be this year. So let's go ahead. I'll show you where these are going to be planted and then we will get them into the ground or into the raised beds. The peas are going to go in this raised bed here. This is the lowest of all of my raised beds. And I left in the sunflower stalks because I use those as a pea trellis both in the fall of last year and in the spring of this year. So I will remove those after I'm done with my cool season and I get ready to plant my warm season, which will be new sunflowers right in this bed. Then I think both the radishes and lettuce will go there. I don't know. I'm still deciding back and forth on that one. So let's go ahead. I will plant the peas now since I'm confident where they're going and then we'll figure out the radishes and the lettuce. Now at some point you do need to water in your seeds. I find it easiest to water the soil first because then I just feel like that doesn't knock the seeds out of place. So if I get the soil moist first and then plant the seeds, it just works a lot easier. And we haven't really had rain for a while, so I think the soil is still pretty dry. So I'm just moving my drip out of the way. I don't have it turned on yet. It's not going to be turned on until probably my warm weather crops. So May, early June, but I'm going to get it out of the way so I can sow the seeds. And I'm also not removing anything from this bed. I'm just putting the seeds into the soil. There are also some pansies in here that are coming back, which is great. Let's get the soil watered. I'm going to plant them right here next to the sunflower stalk so they can grow up them. Now this is just my personal preference, but I like to use a gloved finger to poke in the soil and then I like to use an ungloved hand to put the seeds in. So the peas need to be spaced about an inch to an inch and a half apart and about an inch down. For me, that's kind of to my first knuckle. So I'm just going to put in here the holes first and then I'll put the seeds in second and then we'll get them covered up. So I'm going to do, again, alternating between the two different varieties. And I'm going to put probably two in each hole just to get some germination. All right, that's the Royal Snap 2. Now we'll do the Pea Patio Pride in every other hole here. And then back in with a gloved hand and just covering them up. I can't believe I have my first seeds planted for the season. I'm so excited. All right, so my first crop is sown. It feels so good to have seeds in the soil. I will keep an eye on the moisture level of my raised bed. So not only do I not have irrigation on yet, I don't even have my like water turned on. I mean, it's a nozzle inside that I just have to turn to the right. So it's not difficult, but maybe I should go ahead and turn that on. Either way, I'll be filling a watering can up to keep those moist, assuming that we don't get enough rain, which Seems like we're having a drier than normal spring too. So the peas are in the ground. Let's go ahead and move over to the gomfrina bed, which I think I am gonna do a combination of both lettuce and radishes in that bed. All right, so this is my gomfrina bed. Now, when it comes to growing root vegetables, you wanna make sure that the soil is nice and tilled and fluffy so that there's no obstacles that, in this case for 
the radish to form. So if there's something kind of blocking the radish from forming, it'll just take on an odd shape. Um, still edible, but I just wanna make sure that the soil is loose. Now I did go ahead and till it when I removed what was still in the gomfrina bed and still have tulips growing in here. Although, ooh, nope, here, let me show you what's gonna happen. This just very easily pulled out. So that's what happened to me. Again, I didn't plant these last fall. They've just been in there, but this is what's happened to me when I've tried tulips in containers and not kept them covered. The soil stays so moist that even if they start to grow in like, late winter early spring if the soil is too moist and the bulb is rotting this just pulled right up what you want is to be able to tug and not have it come up don't tug too harshly and break the bulb but that was super easy so let me check the other ones and maybe i don't have to worry about not disturbing the tulips let's see the one next to it again easy easy you can see the end there rotted right off Last one that's in here, same thing, right off. So no tulips left in here. I can go ahead and not be too delicate and rake through here. So I'm gonna remove some of the root balls that are still in here. Now this soil does feel more damp than the pea soil did. I'll still water it just to make sure the soil is moist at the top, but that's interesting that this one seems like it's held on to more moisture. Here is an old bulb that's rotted. All right, I think that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and water this. Now I've found the easiest way to sow radish seeds is just to take my finger. Again, these want to be about a half inch down, which is kind of like here versus here on my finger. So I'm just dragging this along and I will put the seeds in and then I will thin them later to one inch. So let's do two rows right now of radishes and I will just kind of split up the varieties within the rows. So that I'm gonna do for radish, and then we will do lettuce back here, and I'll just do the same thing. So I'm just gonna draw my fingers, put in the lines here, and now we'll sow the seeds. I'm gonna do the two that had the shorter days to maturity, which was the Parks Beauty Blend and then the Early Scarlet Globe. I'm gonna put those in the first row together. All right, so those are my first three crops of 2024 all sown. I'm so excited. I know that in these videos, it's like, oh, it, you don't see anything different because I just put some seeds in the ground and covered them back up, but I'm excited for what's to come. So I'll keep you updated on how everything does, fingers crossed, for a good spring. Um, just some other things. I don't really add compost at this point. I do that more for my warm weather crops since they're gonna be in there, but you can if you want to freshen up the soil. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, I'll just thin the radishes and lettuce when they start to come up. The peas, I will thin if both of the seeds germinate in each hole. And then I just gotta keep them watered. So that's pretty much it. Um, I am excited to be out in the garden. It's so nice. I do have a lot of cleanup still to do that I'll get to at some point. But yeah, I think this is like the start of garden season officially in February. Still crazy to me. Um, so with that, that's going to be everything. Let me know if you've started anything yet for your cool season crops, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.